Hi, I'm Marjorie Vestal with the Healthy Buncombe Eating Smart and Moving More Coalition. Today on Eating Smart in Buncombe County, we're going to be visiting two school gardening programs here in Buncombe County. These programs are designed to help our kids to eat smart and move more where they learn and where they play. Let's go first to the Black Mountain Primary School. I'm here with Megan Cole at the Black Mountain Primary School. How are you today, Megan? I'm doing great. Thanks, Marjorie. I'm really excited to be talking with you today. Well, I'm, I'm working with a larger project called Eat Smart Black Mountain, uh -huh. which is a program that is funded by the North Carolina Health and Wellness Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. And it's a two-year grant that uh, started in the 1st of July of 2007 and will run through the 1st of July in 2009. And the school garden program here at the primary school as well as at the elementary school benefits from the grant as well as the Black Mountain Community Garden. So you are a school garden educator. That's correct. And you get the wonderful job of coming out here and giving kids sometimes their very first taste of gardening. Exactly, exactly. What's your lesson for today? Today we're talking about plant parts and we are looking closely at spinach transplants to talk about the different plant parts and then we'll also be planting them in this garden bed that's right behind us. So we're going to do some transplanting and I wanted to show you a little bit about what that looks like. If I could have each one of you find your little white flower spot in the soil there, each one of you find one of those and stand right in front of it. There should be enough for everyone here. What do we need to do before we can put this plant in the ground? Thank you for raising your hand. How about, how about you? That's right, we have to dig a hole. So you want to find that little white spot in the soil, that's the flower. I marked that spot for you to dig and you want to dig your hole with this trowel and put the soil to the side of the hole. That's a great question. I was just asked, how deep do you want to dig the hole? Well, let me show you something here. There. We, want to, we want to make the hole big enough for this little root ball right here, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really have to be much bigger than the root ball. Yeah. What do you remember from last year? What do you remember from last year about worms? They helped the plants. Oh, I love it. Yes, you're right. And and also remember we talked about how they're one of a gardener they're a gardener's best friend. After we've got the hole and we've got the plant, we want to give the roots a little massage, right? To loosen up the root ball. And then what will happen to that spinach? Who eats it? Well, the, the kids get to eat it, which is probably one of the more exciting uh, outlets for our produce. We do classroom tastings where the kids will harvest produce from the garden, and sometimes we have a guest chef that will come in and prepare the food with the children, mm -hmm. and uh, they get to taste it and take home recipe cards. So do kids like spinach, Megan? Oh, they love it. We did a spinach tasting last year, and kids wanted seconds, thirds, fourths. They wanted as much as we could we could give them. It wow. was really amazing. So this is potentially a great solution to the childhood obesity epidemic. Exactly, exactly, because we're getting the kids outside in the fresh air, moving around, and they're given an opportunity to try fresh foods in a really open environment, and get, oftentimes they're trying foods that they don't get the opportunity to have at home. And, you know, the myth that kids don't like their vegetables, is, I, as far as I can tell, is, is very false because most of the time kids are really amazed at the flavors of the different foods that we, we try together. So. I imagine they're excited about growing it themselves, too. They really are, yes. So this is the second uh, school year that the Black Mountain Primary has been involved in this program. Yes, yes. And I imagine that your hope is that you'll be able to continue after having set up some models that is, that is what we're hoping. We're hoping to acquire some additional funding uh, after our initial grant period is over. And we're also really looking for community members who are interested in volunteering, perhaps parents who have children that go to school here or gardeners in the Black Mountain community that can also lend their time and their expertise to help this project continue. So it takes a village. It, it really does. And the way to expand your program would be for more community and parental involvement. Exactly. 
exactly. All right. Very good. So, Megan, if uh, other schools wanted to start a program like this at their elementary school or middle school, do you have any tips about how a school could get started? Yes, I do, actually. I think one of my biggest pieces of advice would be to connect with other schools that have school garden programs. Mm -hmm. um, certainly those schools in the area that have school gardens have been a great resource for me as, as I've been going through this process here. Um, there are also a number of really great resources such as the Kids Gardening website which offers a lot of links on their website for different grant funding opportunities and so there's there's really a lot of, of material on online on different websites and then of course you know the local uh, community human resources here in the area. So you've been able to uh, talk and exchange some ideas with some of the other school gardens in Buncombe County such as Vance Elementary has a school garden I know and I think the Isaac Dixon Elementary School also has a school gardening exactly. program. Uh -huh. Are there any others that you can think of? There's Hall Fletcher uh -huh. which is in West Asheville and uh, I guess there's also Emma Elementary as well so you know there are a number of them and they've been such a great resource for me. So I just have to ask, Megan, do you love your job? I do love my job. I feel really lucky. You get to see firsthand what fostering a love of your food and a knowledge and understanding of your food, what, how that can really contribute to lifelong eating habits and healthy lifestyle. Truly. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'd love to see the kids. Can't <laughs> wait to hear the lesson. I want to uh, also maybe talk to the teachers some, too. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. I'm here with Miss Courtney, who volunteers at the Black Mountain Primary School. Hey, Courtney, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank good. you. Yeah, so I hear that you uh, teach some of these uh, kids, and you've been teaching them something about trees and plants. How's that going? Yes, ma'am. I've been teaching them since the beginning of the year. I teach them every Wednesday, and we're learning about, we're doing following the standard course of study, and we're learning about living things and how they incorporate from out, being outside to incorporating them in the classroom, so trying to get the hands-on experience with them. Okay, and how do the kids like the hands-on experience? They love it. They're so excited. They love, they, they sit in the classroom all day with their teacher and kind of learn that way, but taking them outside and letting them actually get their hands on, they just get to get out some, really some energy, and they love it. They absolutely love it. They're, they're getting a little exercise they out are. here, They're too. getting a little bit of exercise. They're getting excited about being outside and putting their hands and feet in, getting dirty a little bit. Next to families, schools are the settings where children spend the largest amount of time. They're also places of extraordinary influence on behavior and the development of lifelong behavior patterns. School gardens create an environment that establishes and promotes healthy eating and active lifestyles. Gardening curriculum includes lessons that integrate nutrition, food preparation, physical activity, as well as science and math skills. School gardens are places children come to associate with fun, exploration, and creativity. Next, we'll travel to Vance Elementary School in West Asheville, where a third grade teacher with a passion for the natural world started a school garden on a shoestring budget. Stay with us. Welcome back to Eating Smart in Buncombe County. I'm here on a slightly rainy October day in West Asheville at Vance Elementary School and I'm here with the third grade teacher Greta Cecil. Hey Greta. Hi there, thanks for coming out. Oh, I'm glad to come out and see this beautiful garden that we've created here in Vance Elementary School. We're here in the raspberry patch. Greta, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Vance Elementary School garden? Like, how did y'all get started? Well, we started small and um, just growing lettuces and butterfly garden mm -hmm. plants. But then as um, time went by, we decided we wanted the kids to be able to eat better, have a local fresh snack. Mm -hmm. So we did some research and talked with the kids to see what would you like to see grown in the garden. And raspberry was big on the list. Raspberries, they just love it. So we went to a local nursery and they helped us pick out the right variety we wanted. We wanted late blooming so that the students, when they come back, they are able to enjoy it and 
harvest them and eat them for snack or make raspberry muffins. So that's one way to get kids to eat more fruit and vegetable is ask them what they like. Exactly. Get them involved in picking out what they like. And then you picked a cultivar that's going to have some, uh, some berries in the fall right. when the kids are in school. Right, and it won't be long now. Like every once in a while they come out and pick half a dozen, uh -huh. but it looks like we're getting ready to have a nice big bloom. Oh, that's great. And so you're using these as snacks rather than having uh, vending machines and chips and candy that's bars. Right. Yes. They're eating the raspberries. Yep, that's um, one of their favorites. They also love the snow peas. Every year we do at least three or four crops of the snow peas. And the kids who have never even touched a pea before, they just love it. Because they, uh -huh. they, they're picking it fresh. They're picking it fresh. They grew it themselves. tasting it. They're like, oh, this is so sweet and yummy. Well, I'd so, love to see the vegetable gardens as well. Yes, we'll show you. The kids can show you what they planted on the first day of school or the second day of school. Okay, that would so. be great. So is it just your third grade that's involved? No, not anymore, luckily. Um, it started out that way. Like I said, we wanted to grow a snack garden, but then as other teachers saw how much enjoyment the kids were having out here and parents were just loving it, it started to become a big attraction for Vance. Mm -hmm. Then other teachers and students requested, can we have a plot or can we help grow some of the salsa garden? So. Neat, and so you got some parents involved <clears throat> too. Lots of parents, thank goodness, because it didn't start out that way. And, it was just a few of us, and now we have parents calling, how can they help, community members calling, how can they help. Well, that's great. It is. Well, let's talk to uh, one of the parents that's involved, and then also maybe some of the kids. All right, yay. Okay. So, Erin, I see from your button that you're a parent volunteer here at the Peace Garden. I am. I volunteer in the school, and I have spent time um, in the garden volunteering um, just with other adults and also volunteering in the classroom to, to plant seeds and um, plant things in the garden. Uh huh. And do you also then go into the classroom for, with lessons that relate? Well, yeah. For instance, um, Teague's a first grader, like we said, and uh, in kindergarten, um, I worked with his teacher to when they were working on a lesson about butterflies and metamorphosis. So we um, went in and talked about seeds and planting seeds and what happened to seeds and we planted flowers for the butterfly garden um, that would attract butterflies to the garden. How fun. So uh, does it take a lot of your time? Actually, you know, there are certainly um, parent volunteers who are really dedicated to this garden and do spend a lot of time making a lot of stuff happen. They're amazing folks. I'm one of those volunteers that I put in time when I can. Um, I like to get in this classroom at least once a year, or you know, maybe it's just weeding a part of the garden when I'm sitting waiting to pick them up, or volunteering some hours for the market garden. Um, so it, you know, certainly the the garden could accept as many hours as you had, but. Uh, what's great about a community garden at a school is that there are hundreds of people and if just everybody puts in a few hours, you can make amazing things happen. So just a few hours a year yeah. can really make amazing things happen mm -hmm. when you have hundreds of parents and mm -hmm. kids and neighbors and everybody kind of doing just their little part. Yeah. So here we are with the uh, Vance Elementary Peace Garden uh, supporters. And Greta Cisla, Greta, so these uh, students have helped you out here, huh? Yes, they love the garden. These are ones that are constantly asking, can we go out? We need to water. They keep up with exactly what needs to get done out here so that nothing gets left behind. So Greta, a lot of people think of gardening as a summertime occupation, but when you have a school garden, you have to think about fall crops. Here it is October. What do you have growing here? Well, we're very lucky with our climate. We still have okra, and actually the okra has just been harvested for the tailgate market that we do in West Asheville on Wednesdays, but we have the okra, we have tomatillas growing and tomatoes still over there. We're st we have um, zucchini growing and snow peas, which is everyone's favorite. We tried to keep the snow peas going throughout the year because it adds nitrogen, nitrogen to the soil anyways. Mm -hmm. um, they're not edible, but we still have uh, birdhouse gourds growing. But we use those for arts and crafts and making musical instruments. Well, Greta, this garden that you've created is really an inspiration. Thank you. Thanks for, you know, letting us come out and take a look at your garden and see all the great fun that y'all are having out Yes, here. we are. We love it. And um, we always encourage people to come by and see what we're doing. And there's always, on the weekend, parents out here to talk to if you 
need advice or have any questions. So thank you. Seeing is believing. School gardening programs are living examples of how a small group of committed people can initiate healthy environmental changes that can benefit hundreds of children in our community during their formative years. If you would like more information, please contact a member of the Healthy Buncombe Eating Smart and Moving More Coalition.